Hey guys, welcome back to another Gaming Memories video. Here we are going to be looking at the second video in this series of PS1 racing games only seen in Japan, where we will be looking at another selection of unique and quirky arcade and simulation style racers that were only released in that region. We will look at some of the unique features of each of the games and discuss what made them so popular back in the day, and to even show you some of these games that you may not even have known existed. So before we dive into the games in this video, if you haven't watched the previous video in this series, make sure to go and check that one out to catch up on a lot of the games that were only released in Japan also. I'll make sure to leave a link down in the description. And also be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell icon as there is going to be more videos released in this series sharing with you other unique racing games that were also released in Japan. So let's dive in. Olin's Hyper Rally is an arcade styled rally game that was released in Japan only back in 1996 and it was exclusive to that region and the emphasis of this game is it focuses more so on arcade style elements. From the get go the game play is very very similar to Sega Rally as it also utilises similar gameplay mechanics where you are tasked to complete races but walk your way up the leaderboard until eventually you get to first place. So you start at the bottom of the pack and gradually through each race you try to gain enough position so that you can walk your way up the leaderboard until you get to the final race of the season where you can pit against first place to try and win the overall championship. There are a couple of other similar games that were released in Japan that use a similar style of aesthetic with Rally the Africa and Rally the Europe. Although Hyper Rally is not as well refined compared to the other games as I've mentioned, it does present a unique challenge, although it can be quite unforgiven at times because the handling physics is definitely not as well refined and can be very twitchy and glitchy compared to other style rally games that were on the PlayStation at that time. But apart from the niggles and the flaws, it is a fun game to play and if you are into arcade style rally games and you want something that is somewhat of an equivalent to Sega Rally, although it's not as well refined, Hyper Rally is one of those games that is worth a look at, especially if you're looking for something that is quite unique and rare that a lot of people don't really know about that was released in Japan only, this game will be worth a look into. Released in 1996, Circuit Beat was a Japan only release on the PlayStation that was actually developed by Prism Arts. Behind the simplistic style graphics, don't let the game fool you because the game does present quite a unique and definitely difficult challenge that will actually test your patience as you're going through the game. But it is definitely a unique arcade style game if you're into something that's actually a bit different and even more old school that is along the same lines of the likes of Ridge Racer and other games similar to it. Circuit Beach might actually be a game that actually be maybe worth trying out, especially if you're looking for a game that actually presents fun gameplay but also a unique and adequate challenge for you to actually try and get the most out of it. And it is another unique and quirky early representation of an arcade racer that was released on the PlayStation back in the mid 90s. And if it is something that you're into, this may be worth actually having a look into. So I would highly recommend that you go and check it out. Racing Lagoon is quite an unusual and yet quite unique racing game as unlike other arcade racers that were released on the PlayStation and especially in Japan this game does use arcade style elements but it was also one of the first games to implement RPG elements into the gameplay and what players got 
as a result was a visually breathtaking game that is considered to be one of the all time visually impressive games on the PlayStation 1. The game looks that good that at times you wouldn't even consider it to even be a PS1 title and it still holds up relatively well even by today's standards. Although not as well received in Japan due to the mix of arcade and RPG elements as it was definitely a new idea that was never really utilised in games at that time and over time has acquired quite a cult following due to the unusual elements in the game. So the main idea behind the game is that it's focused around street racing in the Japanese region on the city streets and the highways around Tokyo whereas you play through the campaign with different unique and individual characters all with their own style of cars and abilities and in turn you gain points for completing objectives and winning races and it also utilizes a leveling up system so that you can upgrade your cars features and abilities as you go through the campaign so it was something that was quite unique for its time and it's still something that should be looked into if you're looking for something quite unique even if you compare it to the visual reference of the game because it definitely compares to games like Gran Turismo 1 and 2 and even even Ridge Race or 4 it is definitely on the same level of those games in terms of visual quality so even for that alone it is worth a look so if you are on the lookout for something that is quite unique quirky and a little bit different when it comes to racing games then look no further than Racing Lagoon Not to be mistaken for the same franchise of games that was very popular on the PlayStation 2 and other consoles. Burnout was released on the PlayStation 1 under the Super Light 1500 budget series of games and originally was exclusive to Japan but unlike the other games in this list this game did get a release outside of the Japanese region but it was rebranded under the name of Dragsters that was again also also part of the budget entry series in other regions. The gameplay focuses on drag racing events as you are tasked as the player to complete and win races throughout the scenario or campaign mode with the objective to become the best racer on the streets. The gameplay itself is quite simplistic in its nature and visually the game looks really good. For a budget entry title the car models and the detail on some of the backgrounds and some of the levels are really good which is quite a surprise for these type of games but aside from the good graphics the gameplay is quite different as even though the game is fast paced and the races can be over in a matter of only a couple of seconds but the handling characteristics of each car in the game can be quite twitchy and difficult to master as you will find yourself a lot of time fighting with the car making sure that you have to adjust the sensitivity of the control throughout each race to make sure you don't hit barriers and lose speed and so forth. There are quite a number of different types of cars available in the game also. Anything from the Japanese JDM classic cars from the Nissan Skyline all the way to American examples like the Chevy Camaro and other well-known cars from different eras in Japan and in other regions. As there aren't too many drag racing type games on the PlayStation 1, this game definitely is unique in what it offers and it does stand out compared compared to other games that were available on the system. So if you are looking for something that is very different and is a different style of racing game to what you're used to, then Burnout might be a good alternative to check out. Released back in 1998 in Japan only, GT Straight Victory is a racing game that is actually based off the GT Touring Car Championship within the Japanese region. Straight away from the get go the game is very very reminiscent and reflective of the Toka Touring Car series also on the PlayStation with similar style of visuals and even gameplay mechanics. 
and handling physics. The game does offer a presentable but difficult challenge, but also offers enough content to be able to keep even the most engaged and hardcore racing fans alike on their toes. Like the Tokyo games before it, the game does offer up a unique selection of cars with a mix of Japanese style heavily modified sports cars while also adding in European style cars with different brands the likes of with Vauxhall, Opel, you have Alfa Romeo and even then with Japanese manufacturers with Nissan, Mazda and the like. So there's definitely enough here to be able to cater for hardcore motoring fans alike. And if you're into even the Toka series and even these style of racing games as there is a lot of them in Japan that are very very similar to this game, this is definitely something that is worthwhile if you are a fan of racing in general because it definitely has enough here and enough appeal to keep you playing for some time. So if you're looking for something that is a bit more mainstream and you like hardcore racing games Games, this might be a title that might be worth looking into. Choro Q2 is a sequel to the game of the same name that was released in Japan only in 1997. But unlike the original title in the series, this game and its subsequent sequels never saw a release in other regions, but only in the Japanese region. And continues on with the same formula that made the first game very popular, as it utilizes the same style of visuals and elements from the control systems of the cars all the way through to the colourful graphics on Alpha. And there are a few key elements that have been added into this sequel compared to the original game, as you do have an addition of a few extra tracks, different types of cars to choose from, but you also have the ability to race on different types of terrain where you can go off road, even to a point where you can even race underwater. It's a fun and quirky race title, very similar to the prequel, but again it's not without its flaws, as the gameplay, although it is fun to play, can hamper the experience somewhat with the handling physics of the cars as it tries to utilize drift style mechanics but the control system can be quite sensitive to a point that at times the car can go into a drift without really much effort and leave the car totally spinning out if you're not used to the control physics of the car or at other times it can feel like you're driving a tank where it can be very very difficult to steer a car around the corner so you do have to put in a lot of effort and to get a feel for how the controls work to get the most out of it. Because if you don't maintain your position in the race, before long you'll find yourself at the back of the pack and it is almost impossible to win a race if you don't keep ahead within the first lap. And these issues pretty much continue in its further sequels as it does make the gameplay a lot more difficult. But aside from that, it is a fun title with really quirky and unique colourful style graphics. And if you're a fan of these type of racing games, this is a series that is worth looking into. Released as a Japanese exclusive in 1999 for the PlayStation 1, Initial D was created off the back of the popularity of the classic anime comic book series that is extremely popular within that region and the game follows on the story and the progress of the characters from the anime series and it also gives you an opportunity to be able to play as those characters and to race as the cars from the comic books. So the game possesses all the likenesses of the characters and even the car models from the series itself from the ever popular Toyota AE86 and utilizes drift mechanics as the main focus of the gameplay throughout the races. And you race on different styles of mountain based tracks in toge style racing where you are tasked to win races and drift around different areas of the tracks to try and get ahead of your opponent. Each of the tracks in question are quite frantic, fast paced and can be quite treacherous but they all add to the overall look and feel of the game that replicates the whole story of the comic book series. 
And one of the major things to note about this game is the drift mechanics are definitely one of its best features. Although for a beginner coming into the game, it can take a while to get to grips and master the control system. But once you have got to grips with it, you have access to quite a fun and well put together game. Although not as well established as some other racers on the system, this game definitely holds its own in terms of its characteristics and the fact is that it has the backing of a well popular series. It is a very fun game to play, although quite challenging, where you race on different types of environments and you can race from the likes of nighttime scenes all the way to racing in the daytime. So there's definitely a good mixture of events on offer. And it's just one of those type of games that if you're into racing games with a hint of drift mechanics thrown into the mix this provides a really good overall balance and mixture of all of those elements combined and is definitely worth the luck side by side special is a unique and iconic arcade style racer that was released for the playstation in japan only back in the mid 90s this game is a unique mix of arcade style racing but also mixes in drift elements into the gameplay which makes for an all out enjoyable experience as the gameplay is very fast and frantic and the control system is very fluent and is easy to pick up and play although graphics not as polished as some other similar racers on the system this game definitely has a unique mix of a lot of all of those elements combined for a truly unique experience this also is developed from a very similar line of very popular arcade games that were only seen in the Japanese region and are very popular among fans of car racing and drift racing alike this game in its own right does have a lot of unique followers and with good reason as the gameplay really suits the style of the game itself it just has enough about it to warrant more playthroughs and it's one of those games that when you get used to the handling physics you can quickly become master of the tracks the tracks also have a various different mix of mountain and even off-road style areas to race on all with their own unique elements and challenges from narrow street raceways to cliff edges and tunnels that really alter the gameplay experience to a point that it really challenges the player to get the best out of the vehicle that they're driving and this is a truly unique experience and it is also considered to be one of the best racing games on the system and it truly is a hidden gem so side by side special if you're into arcade racing with drift style elements you should definitely check this game out Side by side. Released in 1997, Hashiria was a Japanese only racing game that was released in that region. It is an arcade specific racing game that is quite similar to the likes of Ridge Racer and it also has visual styles that are very reflective of that concept of racing in the Japan. It also is very similar to the likes of the initial D game that was also released on the PlayStation. But again, it focuses more on arcade style racing rather than drift mechanics. The game actually boasts a number of different tracks to race on, all from the likes of mountain toge style events all the way down to race tracks, all with loads of different cars, there's about 15 in total each with their own unique quirks and characteristics and handling capabilities that range from the likes of a Mini Cooper or even all the way to a Mercedes E-Class even as far as like a Mazda RX-7 among other well-known cars even Toyota Supra so there's definitely plenty of cars here that will suit any type of car fan out there this is actually a really good title and it is considered in my opinion a hidden gem and it's definitely something that is worth checking out and it's actually something that a lot of people actually don't know about so I highly recommend if you're looking for something a little bit different and quirky and you like arcade style racing games on the PlayStation this is definitely something I think that's worth looking into
Top Shinshun in Cow Battle 2 is the second game in the series and like the first game it is exclusive only in Japan for the PlayStation 1 but unlike the first game this game is a drastic overhaul both visually and in terms of the game mechanics. The game has been completely re-envisioned in all areas where you are presented with an entirely different graphical style game and is also considered to be one of the best visually impressive racing games on the PS1 one as the graphics are very polished and well refined and they are created to a high standard although the sense of speed may not be as fast compared to other similar style racing games if you mainly look at Gran Turismo 1 and 2 and other racers on the system but where it lacks in speed it definitely makes up for in the list of cars and features that are available in the game as there are quite a number of cars that you can choose from from different manufacturers all the way from Honda Toyota, Subaru, Mazda and you have loads of customization options available to be able to upgrade the cars using various different parts and even adding visual elements like some body kits and so forth so that you can improve the overall look and feel and overall power of the car so that you can get further in the campaign so that you can unlock even more features moving forward. Like the first game in the series it also has qualities of both an arcade race but also has simulation focused style racing that is very similar to the likes of the Gran Turismo series and having been the first game in the series that I myself have played personally where this was my first introduction into the series I was really impressed by the visuals and the overall gameplay style and mechanics although it's not as well refined and well polished as Gran Turismo it is a really good alternative so if you are looking for something that is along those lines and you're into those type of racers the option tuning car battle series is definitely worth a look at Toge Max 2, unlike its predecessor, was a Japanese exclusive game that was released back in 1998. Unlike the first game in the series that also was given a separate name in different regions under the name of Peak Performance, Toge Max 2 is a complete overhaul of the original in every sense of the word, down to the graphics, the handling, physics of the game, the visuals and pretty much every major element of every part of the game has been drastically changed and overhauled but keeping with the same formula that made the original game as popular as it is and just improved on the overall look and feel of the game boasting a wide selection of very popular and highly sought after and rare cars from the JDM market back at that time period you also do get access to cars from the European region also from brands like the BMW even Mini and Ford while also throwing in a handful of unique and quirky vehicles that you can unlock throughout the course of play that adds a bit of fun to their overall replayability of the game so if you're looking for a unique sequel that's a drastic improvement over the original title and that was released in Japan only then Toge Max 2 will be something worth checking out So here we have taken a look at another selection of unique, fun and quirky style racing games that were only seen in Japan on the PlayStation. Each have their own fun aspects along with their unique quirks and features, but I'd love to know your thoughts on each of the games in this list and even in the subsequent videos in the series. And what do you think of them, if you played them yourself and if so, what are your overall experiences with them? Be sure to share it down in the comments below. And if you have enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, also be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon as there will be more videos coming in this series sharing yet more racing games that were released only in Japan. And also be sure to share this video with other fellow like minded gamers as there are a lot of people out there that don't know a lot about these games. So it may introduce a lot of these games to new players. So be sure to check out the next video in the series and until next time. 
make sure to keep playing those classic games and enjoying them and keep those gaming memories alive.